On LightSide, I did some of the visual effects myself, a lot of it with the help of Blender. On the two films I've made in Hollywood so far, the workflow is pretty much like this. The movie is shot in RAW, then for editing you get a smaller proxy video file. That takes up less space and is more workable. During editing you want to be able to show people kind of what you're going for, so you do temp VFX using the proxy files. As an example, here's my shitty initial temp for Diana dying. Then, once you've tested the film and everyone's happy with it, the VFX company makes the final visual effects using the RAW files. All the other proxy files in the movie are replaced with the RAW files as well, of course, so you get the best quality. On Lights Out, I made almost all of the temp effects myself, and while doing some of these effects, I felt that if I'm going to spend time on it anyway, I might as well do it properly and do the final effect myself. For these shots, I had to ask for the RAW files from the lab to work on. It's kind of strange, but in editing, you don't have access to the original files, so whenever I wanted a shot, we'd have to take money from the post-production budget to get them from the lab. That's just how it works here. So here's one of my VFX shots. Looking at the original shot in the edit, I felt that this area was too empty. I wanted the feeling that Diana had written all over these walls, so I went to the store and bought some ink and paper and did some writing, which I then photographed with my iPhone since that was the only camera I had at the office that day. I played around with colors and textures for a bit to try and make the writing match the one in the basement, and to match the perspective I used one of my favorite Blender plugins, Blam. It can calculate the position of a camera from a still photo using some kind of magic. Since I was working on this shot anyway, I also painted out this cable. You see, it, it wasn't possible for us to get a wireless version of Rebecca's blacklight, so there was always a cable going out her pant leg. Our production designer was just given random things to write on the wall, but in editing I wanted the writing to say specific things. So again, using my iPhone, since that was the camera available, I took some photos of a concrete wall and in Blender I created these shots with an animated camera move and, and blue light. I figured that I would eventually have to take photos with a better camera, but looking at the renders I thought it actually looked really good. For a bump map I just used a black and white version of the texture and it worked well enough. Did you notice that these shots were created in a computer? I also did this extreme close-up of a fingerprint the same way. Took a photo of my fingerprints, uh, took a photo of a wooden door and put it all together in Blender. Another created shot is this one. In the edit, I felt we really needed a point of view shot as Martin was walking away. I had this shot looking in the direction I wanted, but it was from a low angle. So I did some camera projection mapping in Blender, and I then moved the camera to where I wanted it, which gave me some texture problems, of course, so I had to go in and fix that with some digital paint. I also needed a bit of wall in the foreground, so I grabbed a piece of wallpaper from another shot and painted a wooden frame. The digital painting was done in the software Krita, which is my favorite painting and image editing software. The thing about VFX shots like this is that the audience doesn't expect it to be a visual effect, so it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. If you see a dinosaur on screen, you're more critical because you expect it to be a visual effect. A shot like this? Not so much. To get the fire to extinguish in the furnace, the practical effects guys had made a rig that would drop a damp towel onto the flames. Unfortunately, it looked really lame. So I asked the effects guys to get some compressed air, and instead we shot three elements. We shot a tilt down the furnace to get all we needed to see of it. We shot the damp cloth falling onto the flames. And we blew some air into the ashes to get a puff of smoke. Using these three elements, I could stitch it all together and get this. As a director, you don't have to be able to do visual effects yourself, but if you're at least familiar with what you can do and how it works, it really comes in handy when things aren't working out on set. After Martin runs to his bed, I wanted a shot from the outside of the house. The problem was that we either had this shot, where all the lights are off, or this one, where they are all on. And I only wanted the light to be on in Martin's room. So I cut out a window with the light on in this shot, tracked this shot in Blender, and put the window in. This FaceTime call with Martin was a similar process. I took the video file of Martin and compressed it heavily into an MP4 file to get it to look like a low bandwidth FaceTime call. I used Blam to place the camera and I even went the extra mile and created some geometry for this lamp in Blender so that the reflection would be accurate. 
there's a story behind this shot. You see, we shot the opening scene on location in a factory in, in East LA. Originally, Paul was on the phone with a family friend that we never see. But when we showed the film to a test audience, they didn't get how Paul was related to the other characters. I figured the family photos would be enough, but nope. So it was decided that during additional photography, we'd shoot Paul FaceTiming with Martin instead. The studio didn't want to spend the money and go back to the factory just for that scene, though, so we built part of the office elsewhere. We couldn't reshoot this angle, though, so instead I took this shot and just looped it back and forth so that Paul never gets up and inserted Martin on the screen. For the scene shortly after, I also added a Mulberry Hill stamp to the folder Paul picks up. This I did with Mocha Pro. It's uh, not an inexpensive piece of software, but Blender is just not great for 2D tracking like this, and now that I was getting paid, I treated myself to a nice piece of tracking software. I've used it a lot since buying it because it really does come in handy for tracking and stabilizing. And hey, there's even a plugin to use Mocha's tracking data in Blender. The outside of the factory was shot on the Warner Brothers lot. Even though it's the opening shot of the movie, this was the very last thing we shot, and it was quite late in post-production. The Conjuring 2 was shooting on the lot, so I got to borrow some of their crew one evening to get this. I had picked out a suitable building and sent this image over with what I wanted. I figured I could put in a sign myself if they only put up some lights on the wall. The lens on the camera couldn't get as close to the street light as I wanted without going out of focus, so I did a digital camera move for the first part of the shot, and I also stabilized it a bit. The rest of the shot was camera tracked in Blender, so I could put in the sign. If you've tracked a shot in Blender, you can actually remove lens distortion from your footage with just a click of a button, so I did that as well. One of the things that test audiences told us was that they wanted more backstory. So during the additional photography, I shot some stuff myself with my Blackmagic pocket camera. Now, when the MPAA first saw the movie, they gave it an R rating, mostly because of this. They thought it looked like the guy didn't have a head, and it was too gruesome. Even though he did have a head, the actor was just leaning back. Now, it wasn't like the studio told me, this has to be PG-13. They were more like, you know, we don't mind making R-rated movies, but this one feels like it would appeal to a broader audience, so maybe it would be a shame to not have it PG-13. My view on it was, this shot wasn't even supposed to be in the film originally, so it wasn't like my vision would be compromised or anything if it wasn't exactly like this. The only hesitation I had was that if it was rated PG-13, some horror fans would be hesitant to see it because they're like that. But I figured, fuck it. So I took a still frame of the shot and gave him more of a head, did a little less blood on the wall, and also made the spatter different because I didn't really like how it looked originally. In Blender, I then projected this onto some really simple geometry so I could do a little bit of a camera move. And just to play it safe, I also focused more on the writing on the wall. It was resubmitted to the MPAA, received a PG-13 rating, and the internet rejoiced. I did a couple of other shots as well, like make Drawn Diana less Bob Marley and more stick figure, and the opening title. Of course, using the same drawing I made for the short. So those were most of the visual effects that I made for Lights Out, but the majority of the visual effects were made by uh, the Aaron Sims company, which is, you know, a real VFX company. But, you know, I still like doing a little bit myself. So thanks for watching.